welcome back. My name is Leila Farugi, and today we'll be making one of my favorite Persian pastries, Zubia Bamiye. These things are amazing. You bite into them, you just feel like almost like a rich honey syrup coat your tongue. And they're really, really sweet and actually really, really easy. Let's get started. For this recipe, we'll be needing a little bit of saffron to mix in water and dilute, two eggs, three tablespoons of unsalted butter, one tablespoon of golab or rose water, one cup and two tablespoons of granulated sugar, one cup of all-purpose flour, vegetable oil, or in our case, Mediterranean blend oil. Any frying oil will do, and obviously it's an indefinite amount. So the first step is to make the saffron water, which is mainly for color. Now, if you're using real saffron like we are, you'll you want to use, you know, roughly maybe a quarter teaspoon, a teaspoon. It's really about how bright you want it, so we're making it pretty bright. This is a pretty happy amount. But if you're using something called Spanish saffron, you'll want to use a lot more because the color is a lot more diluted. Next, we'll be adding some hot water to the saffron, so hopefully it will all dissolve. That's about enough, and we will give it a little stir. And make sure you do not spill this. This stuff will stain forever. So we'll add roughly all this to the mixture later. So here's a cup of sugar going into the pan. Next, we'll add half a cup of water to the sugar. So I'm going to turn on the heat here to roughly medium. This is we want to bring this to a boil and keep on stirring until it is nice and thick. As you can see, we have brought this puppy to a boil and the syrup is pretty decently thickened. We still have a little bit of heating to do, so it will become a little bit thicker. You want it really to be a syrup, not sugar water. So now I'm gonna add one tablespoon of rose water and this thing smells amazing. Let me pour it in. Yum, 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 yum. Next, we're gonna add roughly one teaspoon, or however you much, however colored you want, to the boiling mixture. Add it in. And this will stain your things, so careful. And I'm gonna mix, mix it in. Mix, 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 mix. That is not colored enough, and I'm gonna add another teaspoon. Like I said, it's really to your preference. So I'm gonna bring this nice gooey syrup to a boil again, and you can see the bubbles are already forming on the bottom. And stir, keep on stirring and do it for roughly another three minutes. So it's now been three minutes, and this is extra, extra syrupy. You can see it's, it didn't stir very well, and there's a little hard candy on the side there. But we're gonna let this sit and let it cool, and we'll start on the fried dough batter. So now we start off with one cup of water in a similar size pot on the stove. So now I roughly chopped up about three tablespoons of butter and I'm gonna add that into the water and turn on the heat to very low and I'm gonna wait until this becomes a butter water mixture. While we're waiting for this to mix up a little bit, two tablespoons of sugar. So as you can see here, we don't have any more lumps of butter. You can still see a separation between the butter and the water, just because oil is in butter and oil and water do not mix. So this is about as well blended as we need it. So now I've measured out about a cup of flour and I'm going to add this to the water, butter, sugar mixture. So gently add it in, keep it stirring, and keep the heat on. So as you can see, this is now very, very doughy, and I took it off because I was afraid it was going to start cooking here. And there shouldn't be any like visible signs of flour. If there is, that's okay, because we still got a little bit of mixing to do, and we are going to set this aside and let it cool completely. While we're waiting for the dough to cool, I'm going to show you some of my favorite methods to cool down this dough to about room temperature. First thing I like to do is roll it in a ball. Think about something that makes you mad. And 
then punch them when you have uh, the dough. Oh no! It broke! Okay, I feel so much better. Another one of my favorite methods is practicing my high fives. So I flatten it out, hold it up roughly high five height, and then pretend like you see a friend and be like, hey! High five! And the slap sound is amazing. You could also try practicing your sculpture making. Do I want to build a snowman? I built a snowman, guys. Next, while we're waiting for the dough to cool down a little bit, we're going to start by warming up the oil and get it ready for frying. So we're using a griddle that's actually for, like, separate from the stove, but you can definitely use a pot or a pan and fill it with oil and fry it. And so I'm going to fill it up with oil and let it warm. So. And keep on going. You want a pretty good thick layer of oil, maybe like a quarter inch. I think this will be good. You can always move it around if you don't want to completely deep fry it. Keep it as healthy as possible here. Now the dough is completely cooled and ready to be worked with, I'm going to add two eggs. So. mix that in. So next it's time to deep fry these things and so what I'm using here is a contraption I found around lying around the house. Normally people use a star tip so you can use a plastic bag, a normal piping bag. Honestly I like taking a zip lag and nipping the corner. It'll all give you the same exact thing. It's just appeal and appearance. So I'm gonna squirt off a little tiny bit and then end it. Oh that's sticky. So next we're going to scoop these up and drain off the oil and we're going to take it and put it in the honey sugar syrup we made and let those soak for 5 minutes. So now that these have been soaking in there for about 5 minutes, I pick them up out of the mixture, I strain them a little bit and try to get all the liquid out of them and then pour it on a separate plate. and. Wait these for these to cool down a little bit more and they are ready to be nommed on. So the Zulbia are done. I let them soak. They're cooled a little bit and I am so excited. I am so glad how they turned out. You see we have a little different types, different textures. So I'm going to try a big old fat one. Let's go. Ready? One, two. Probably it is a little bit of tea afterward. Perfect. Chai or tea and Zulbia Bamia are the perfect match for each other. So if you like this recipe, like the video, comment down below if you have any questions, subscribe to my channel for more interesting new international pastries and desserts, and as usual, follow me on Instagram if you aren't already at underscore Persian Persuasion underscore. Bye!